Math 31, welcome to example three. Example three has the same directions as example one. It says determine the, char ooh, determine the characteristics and graph the parabola having this equation. And you can see all these traits that we have to list out there, the exact same traits as example one. But the difference here, the main difference in example one to example three is here I gave you the equation of the graph and in example one, I actually gave you the graph of the parabola. So here you have the formula before you had the graph, but I still want to get the same traits. All right, so let's practice getting these traits, getting these characteristics from the equation this time. All right, so I'm being asked to find the vertex, y-intercept, x-intercept, direction of opening, axis of symmetry, and where these things, where this parabola increases and decreases. All I have right now is, is this, this little equation. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I noticed the negative three here as the lead coefficient. So ultimately, when I graph this, I know I'm gonna have what I call a sad parabola, right? It's gonna face down because that lead coefficient is negative. That's the only thing I know about it. And the first trait I'm being asked to find is the vertex. And I wanna remind you of the formulas that we can use to find a vertex. Now we saw this on the previous page, that if you're asked to find the vertex of a, of a parabola, you can use the formula negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate, and then you can plug that x-coordinate into your function to get the y-value of your vertex. So we're gonna apply these formulas in this example. So since I can't get this all on the same view screen, I'm gonna scooch this up, and I'm just gonna work on that vertex down here a little bit. So let me move this out of sight. All right, and then let's try and work on this. So I'm just gonna draw a nice little separating squiggles. All right, and then let's try and work on the vertex. All right, and now just to remind us, actually let me write the equation of my parabola above that, just so we know what parabola we're working with. We have negative three x squared plus 12x minus eight, and I would like to find the vertex. All right, and I am told that if I would like to find that vertex, that x coordinate, I need to use the ratio negative b over two a. Well, I can see from this parabola here that a is equal to negative three, b is equal to positive 12, and c is equal to negative eight. So let's try plugging this in. I would get negative 12 over two times negative three. So in this case, when I look at that ratio, it turned out to be a nice whole number. So I know that I have a vertex with an X coordinate of two. If I would like to find the Y coordinate, we'll plug two back into the Y equals formula. That's telling you what Y is equal to, so let's do it. So Y, if I evaluate that at X equaling two, and if you haven't seen that notation before, that's, that's what we're referring to, y at x equaling two, it's like saying f of two, um, would be negative three times two squared plus 12 times two minus eight. I'm gonna try and do a little mental math. Um, two squared would be four. Four times negative three is negative 12. I'm gonna add 24 to it, subtract eight from it. So let's see, negative 12 plus 24 is positive 12 but 24, excuse me, positive 12 minus eight. What did we just say, 12 minus eight is four. So I've just identified my vertex. My vertex is gonna be the ordered pair two comma four, all right? So let me go ahead, put that in. So we're gonna scooch all the way back up and it looks like my vertex now is the ordered pair two comma four. With that, I'm going to go ahead and start labeling and scaling my axes. And I'm going to put two, one, two, three, four. There it is. There's my vertex. All right, the next thing I'm being asked to find is the y-intercept. Well, anytime you want to find a y-intercept, I'm going to just leave some space, you're going to let x equal zero. When you let x equal zero, Let's see, y evaluated at x equaling zero would be negative three times zero squared plus 12 times zero minus eight. It looks like negative eight. So I have the ordered pair zero, negative eight. 
Let's go draw that one in. So zero, and then two, four, six, eight. And just through symmetry, I think you can see you've got an X coordinate of your vertex is at two, and this Y intercept is at zero. So I can see there's a distance here, at least in X coordinates of two units, right? I move two units left to get there. All right, so from two X equaling two to X equaling zero. We'll go the other direction, go two units right, and then I would still have to be down here at negative eight. So there's gotta be some symmetry there. Okay, the next thing I'm being asked to find are the x-intercepts, and those are a little bit more intricate. I'm, I'm gonna need some, some space to do this, so I'm gonna scooch my paper down again, and we're gonna take care of it. Now, if you want an x-intercept, you let y equal zero, right? It's always let the opposite letter zero out. So let me go ahead, scooch my paper up, so I have some room here. All right. So if I want to go ahead now and find, not so much the vertex, but let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts. I want to let y equal zero. So in this case, I want negative three x squared plus 12 x minus eight to be equal to zero. All right, well, it's a matter of, I either factor, right? I complete the square or I use the quadratic formula. And if you remember from way back in chapter two, these will always work, these two methods. You'll always be able to complete the square or use the quadratic formula. Factoring might work. Um, I'm not seeing a way to factor this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So for the quadratic formula, I would have x being equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. So as I'm looking at this, I think this is gonna be negative 12 plus or minus the square root. All right, 12 squared is 144. Actually, I'm gonna do this determinant, I'm sorry, this discriminant just on my calculator. Let's do 12 squared minus four times negative three times negative eight. I am looking at 48 under there over negative six. Okay, let me remove that. Um, let's see, a 16 lives inside of 48, so I can make this negative 12 plus or minus, all right, this would be, 48 would be 16 let me do a little off to the side. 48 is equal to 16 times three. If that's all under a square root, that would be four square root three over negative six. And you need to be careful, all right? I can't just cancel the six and the 12. That is not how this works, right? This is a monomial on the denominator. This is a binomial on the numerator. And when I say binomial, I mean I'm adding two terms. Ooh, and as I look up, I'm running out of space. Let me move this up just a bit more. So I have some space to work with. Again, monomial, binomial. They don't just cancel out. I would need to factor something out of the numerator. In fact, I'm going to factor out a two. So if I factor out a two here, I get negative six plus or minus two root three over negative six. So when I cancel this out, I'll cancel out the two. This will leave me with a three. So I am looking at negative six plus or minus two root three over positive three is what it's look, oops, not positive three, there's a negative there, I don't wanna drop it, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and figure out what our numbers would be. And I'm gonna to round to three decimals. So on this numerator here, it looks like I have negative six plus two square roots of three, and I'm gonna divide that by negative three, and it looks like I'm gonna get about 0.845. And I then need to do negative six minus two square roots of three divided by negative three, and it looks like I'm at about 3.155. Okay, so with all of that, I found my x-intercepts. I've got two of them. All right, so let me go write these up. I'm gonna, a lot of scooching on this one. All right. All right, 
there we go. All right, so we had an x-intercept at 0, 0.845 comma 0, and then 3.155 comma 0. Let me go write those in. So that's about 0.845, that seems right. 3.155, that seems pretty good, just based on what my parabola is looking like. The direction of this opening, again, we said because that a value is negative, this is going to open down. I can see my axis of symmetry. It's this vertical line here, and it's got to go through the vertex. All right, so give me a moment. This is a vertical line that goes through our vertex and the x-coordinate of our vertex is 2. This has to be the vertical line x is equal to 2. And let me start drawing in this parabola. It's pretty steep. It grows pretty fast. It's got that multiplier of 3 out in front of it, so it's going to be growing pretty fast. Okay, now here I my my parabola goes increasing and then decreasing, and it switches right at that x-coordinate of 2. All right, so remember that x -inter excuse me, vertices, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, these are all ordered pairs. But when we start to get to the bottom of this, right, let me move this up just so we can see the graph. When we get to intervals of increasing and decreasing, right, these are intervals. I only want the x-coordinate. So my function here is increasing from negative infinity to 2. Right? I'm always going to use parentheses, and I'm going to reference my x-axis. And then this function happens to be decreasing from positive 2 to infinity. Okay? So there's a pretty good look at your graph. If you ever wanted to check it, well, you can, right? You can hit y equals, ooh, I have a whole bunch of stuff in there. Let me clear that out. You can type in, oh, and let me turn that plot off. I was doing um, a stat problem. I can see my plots off. If I hover over this and hit enter, you can see that it's no longer got a black background, so it's off. So let me type in negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 8. Hit zoom 6. Anytime in a, I'm in a math problem, I'm going to hit zoom 6 to reset my, my graph. And that, that looks pretty close to what I graphed over here. Right? That's looking good. It does to me, it looks like there's an x-intercept somewhere around, let's see, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, somewhere around 3, which is good, and somewhere around 1, which is good. And I, I got those pretty close to 1 and 3, respectively. All right, so that's lining up on my graph. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so I'm going to flip to the next page. And then we're just going to summarize what we've gone over so far in terms of graphs of parabolas. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, Math31. So just to summarize what we've learned about graphs of quadratic functions, they have the vocab term parabolas. All right, so we've graphed parabolas before, or you probably have at some point in your math career. We have y equaling x squared being one of those toolkit functions we talk about. All right, so sometimes Quadratic functions will be defined in general form, right? So we call this general form. ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, this is a great form to use a quadratic formula off of. Um, sometimes your, your quadratic will be in standard form, or what I call vertex form. So this is either called standard or vertex form. And you can find your vertex, right, the actual vertex by um, using the formula negative b over 2a for the x-coordinate and then plugging that x-coordinate into your function to, getting, to get your y-coordinate. All right, and then there's all sorts of, of traits that this graph has. So it's a parabola, right, the graph of your quadratic function, it's a parabola. The vertex is going to be h, excuse me, h comma k. You're going to have a vertical line at x equaling h that's going to be your axis of symmetry, okay? If your a value is positive, your parabola is gonna open up. 
If your A value is negative, your parabola is going to open down. All right. If your A value is a fraction, all right, then the graph is actually going to be wider than your toolkit function of y equaling x squared. But if your A value is any number greater than 1, like we saw in example 3, it was, it was actually um, 3, or the absolute value of A was 3, it's, it's much narrower, it's a much skinnier parabola. The y-intercept is always 0c. That's one of the advantages of general form. You can always read your y-intercept a lot, lot quicker than you can um, from standard form. The x-intercepts come from solving your equation once you set it equal to zero. Let me scooch this up. There are a few possibilities as you move through here. And if you remember in section 2.5, we talked about the discriminant. All right, when your discriminant was positive, you would have two solutions to your quadratic equation or to the quadratic formula. If it was equal to zero, you'd have one solution. If it was less than zero, you'd have two imaginary solutions. And that plays out for x-intercepts as well. If your discriminant's positive, you're going to have two x-intercepts, and they will have the coordinates that you get from your quadratic formula. If your discriminant is equal to zero, then you're only going to have the one x-intercept, and it's going to occur at negative b over 2a comma zero. And then if your discriminant's negative, you won't have any x-intercepts. And we saw that happen with the parabola in examples one and two. Sometimes there aren't any x-intercepts. All right, so with that, we're going to really focus on finding the maxes and mins of quadratic functions, and I'm, I'm going to start to break apart how you can use your calculator to help you with all of this stuff. All right, I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye.